I'm representing a minerals group. I'm looking to do a large transaction. These things are usually marketed processes. You know, the diligence takes quite a bit of time, you know, un you know, underwriting the deal and going through the two to three month, even longer process in the data room takes time. Uh, I'm assuming having an engagement and, and talking with an advisor like Aegis is essential, uh, but walk through because the hedges get locked in at the moment, you know, the deal is closed, right? It's not like, okay, it's April and this is, this is strip and this is our underwriting today. We're going to close in 90 days, but then you're constantly reevaluating your underwriting based on what you can lock your hedges in. Right. I mean, is it a walk through that dance? Cause that that's interesting and, and it matters. I mean, if you're, trying to lock in um, a certain type of return and there's volatility uh, you know, that day-to-day -day heartburn can be, can be real. No. Well, a hundred percent. In fact, we've seen some really large transactions that have, um, that have been pulled back because the commodity price changed in such short period of time. And in those cases, or in some cases, and, and some specifically documented, um, you know, people took their hedges off at PSA. It was a, it was a condition of the PSA. Then prices went 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 south, and the deal got called off. And you know, the 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 seller uh, was left without a hedged you know without a hedged position. That's obviously incredibly dangerous, and a lot of a lot of value gets gets lost there. Uh, you know, th there are some structures at PSA that to 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 balance that, and and look, a lot of people don't don't like um, buying puts, but you know, there are we're seeing more and more um, co what's called deferred puts uh, being put in place at PSA. So it does protect to the downside. Um, the good news is that the cost of that you know gets spread out you know to to settlement of those hedges so that you know you're not paying the full premium of those puts up front because a put effectively puts a floor and um, is the is the simple way to think about it. Um, we typically never talk about swaptions you know to our to our customers, but they can be a very effective tool in bridging that PSA to close. Um, because it does give you, it does set a, a price floor and gives you still the option to uh, to exercise that um, you know, that position if you choose. So if the deal were not to fall, you know, not to you know close, you know, there's a way to exit, et cetera. So there are some unique options, or, or I shouldn't say options because I don't want to confuse. There's some unique structures um, that can be put in place to bridge that gap between PSA and close. Um, there's just a, to your point, a lot of risk, you know, if, if you've got, you know, 60, 90, 120 days between, you know, PSA and close. And we used, uh, in terms of scale, we use from a minerals, not a perspective, not using production as a metric, let's use transaction size. What is the general transaction size you think is a minimum to start thinking about hedging? Would you say? Oh, um, gosh, I, I would think. Tim, you know, we're at $5 million transaction. I think there's, there's room for hedging. I mean, all, all that's going to be a bit commodity price dependent, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be um, that big, especially if, um, you know, if there's, you know, if there's an operator in sight or rigs nearby and there may be drilling activity in the near term, et cetera, you know, there's a, um, I, I would say good to have a conversation, whether it be with us or someone like us, uh, always worth having that discussion up front because there there are likely to be some opportunities you want to consider, and it won't cost you anything to have a have a first conversation. Yeah, I mean that's lower than I would have thought.